Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. By now you've heard of Kubernetes and know that it has become the de facto standard for cloud native applications. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure Tanzu Kubernetes Grid inside of your VMware SDDC environments. So let's get started. Let's take a minute and talk about what Tanzu Kubernetes Grid is before we get started with the installation. So Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, or TKG, is VMware's enterprise-grade Kubernetes offering. It can be deployed in a VMware SDDC environment. It can be deployed on native AWS or in native Microsoft Azure environments. It has the flexibility to be able to have the same lifecycle and deployment model across all three of these cloud offerings, which makes it a powerful tool for operations teams to be able to leverage as they go down this path of Kubernetes. All right, there are a few things that need to be pre-created within our VMware SDDC environment before we can begin. So here on the screen, you can see my NSX UI, where I've actually created four NSX segments that I leverage for my Tanzu Kubernetes installation. So the first segment that you see here is the VIP segment. Now this VIP segment is going to be leveraged by the NSX Advanced Load Balancer to grab IP addresses for the front end services for both the control and the data plane of Kubernetes. In addition to that, I have a management segment, mostly because I like to segment off my management cluster from all of my workload clusters. Now there's different ways to do tenancy. You can have all of these within a single network if you want, or you can segment them out in a similar fashion to what I've done. In addition, you can also have a secondary VIP network as well if you want to truly segment the control plane traffic of Kubernetes from the data plane traffic where the applications are going to be deployed. Now, all of those are going to be based off of your requirements within your environment. Now that we've created the networks per our design requirements, the next step for us to do in the installation is to actually create our bootstrap server. Now, this bootstrap server can be Mac OS, can be Windows, or it can be Linux. Personally, I deploy an Ubuntu desktop VM actually inside of my SDDC environment, and I use that bootstrap server for all of my lifecycle activities. Regardless of which operating system you choose, you need to make sure that this bootstrap server actually has connectivity to your vCenter server and to your NSX Advanced Load Balancer control plane, as that's going to be critical for it to actually be able to deploy the clusters. Now you're gonna use this bootstrap server long-term for all of your lifecycle activities within your environment. It'll be used to actually instantiate the management cluster, as you'll see in a few moments, and then also our workload clusters. The other thing to remember is that this bootstrap server will be used for additional activities, such as scaling in and scaling out clusters, and it'll be used to be able to actually upgrade from one version of TKG to the next. Now, the binaries for the bootstrap server are actually on the VMware website, and you'll download those as part of actually downloading the TKG bits. And it'll include all of the additional binary files that you need. You'll see in the cutout window the official documentation. Now, that documentation is actually rather well written, and you can actually follow it step by step for your operating system to be able to stand up and create this first bootstrap server. Now, make sure that you have Docker installed, and you can see in the screen here as it goes by that I'm actually going through and installing all of the different bits, including kubectl, YTT, IMG, PKG, and the other binaries that are necessary. And I'm validating that actually Docker is installed and running for the local user that I've created within my Ubuntu OS. Now that we've set up the Bootstrap VM with everything needed to actually install and deploy TKG within our environment, the last step that we need to do is actually take the OVA that we downloaded from VMware.com that is the template for our Kubernetes VMs that TKG is going to install for us. Upload that OVA into vCenter server and make sure you've converted it to a template, at which point we're finally able to start and deploy our first management cluster. Okay, we're now ready to deploy our management cluster and configure the very first YAML file. So first, what we want to do is open up a shell on that bootstrap VM and run the command tanzu management-cluster-create-ui. 
Now, what this is going to do is actually open up a web service that we can use Firefox to on that local box. Now, what I've done here on the screen is actually RDP into the host itself so that I can run a, a Firefox directly on the VM. Now, once I've opened up Firefox, I'm going to open up the browser to localhost port 8080, at which point we'll see the uh, Tanzu um, installation guide. You're going to go ahead and click on the vSphere option. And then you're going to go through here and actually just fill out all of the information. You'll see it takes you step by step through the process. So you can see the first thing that we do is actually fill out the information and credentials for our vCenter server. Once we've done that, we want to actually verify the connection. So it'll do the thumbprint thing and then connect. And when it connects, it's actually pulling vCenter. So it's going to start pulling all of the data stores, the template that's available to us, the network, everything that we're going to need as we go through the rest of this. So here you can see the cluster information and the cluster information is actually going to be where we specify whether we're doing something from a development perspective where it's going to deploy a limited number of instances or a production deployment. And really what differentiates the two is that a production deployment is going to deploy three controller VMs for Kubernetes by default. And then unless you specify an option later, it's going to also deploy three worker nodes for you. But you're going to go ahead and fill out things like the management cluster name that you want to give it um, and whether or not you're using cube VIP or whether you're using the NSX advanced load balancer. You can see here that I've specified the advanced load balancer. So that's going to open up a next uh, screen down below. In addition, I'm going to actually specify the size of the controller VMs and the worker VMs. Now, all of this can be edited within the YAML file at a later time if we so choose. But these are the guidelines that VMware gives us as we go through this UI. Now, the NSX load balancer portion, it's going to have pre-populated some of this stuff. Once we connect, you're going to see I scroll up here um, to make sure that I actually can enter in the endpoint for my advanced load balancer control plane. I give it the username and password, and then I also go ahead and actually load in the certificate authority. Here you can see on the screen that I've gone back to the NSX advanced load balancer UI. I've clicked on my controller certificate, selected it, and then I'm going to copy to clipboard and then flip back to my Firefox window where I'm going to copy that into the into the window here on the TKG UI. And I'll know that I've done it correctly because I'll actually click the verify credentials port portion here and it will actually work. Now, once I've verified the certificate for the NSX advanced load balancer, it's going to query and then pull up a bunch of information. So I'm going to specify the cloud that I'm using, which is the default. And then I'm going to enter in some specific information for both the workload clusters and the management cluster. Now it's going to go ahead and ask for all of this information up front, even though right now we're just generating the YAML file for the management cluster. All of this information will be in there so that we can actually use this same YAML file when we want to deploy a workload cluster as well with just a few modifications. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that it knows what the service engine group is, what the workload cluster data plane and control planes are. Like I said earlier in the video, you have a choice. Those can be the same or you can segment that traffic off depending on your network requirements. And then you're going to go ahead and do that for both the workload and the management um, and the management cluster itself as well. Now, the UI is also going to ask you for some information around metadata, labels that you might want to add. Feel free to do those based off of your requirements within your own environment. Um, and then it's going to actually ask you for the resources. Now, the resources are vSphere specific resources that it's looking for. So this is you're going to specify the, the data store that it's going to be used using the network that it's going to use for the actual VMs themselves. So in my case, this is going to be that Tanzu management segment that I created within NSX. Um, you're also going to specify what cluster you're going to be deploying onto within your environment. If you have multiple vSphere clusters, you're going to want to make sure that it's going to the right location. And then you can also specify the VMware folder that you want it to put into for organization within your vCenter server. Now, the last few things that it's going to ask for are if you're going to um, connect your Kubernetes server up to an Active Directory or LDAP for authentication. You can do that if you so choose here. I've skipped it because, again, this is just my environment within my, my home lab. Um, and then, of course, you're going to actually specify the OS image, the template that you up 
that loaded to your vCenter server should appear here. Now, if you didn't convert it to a template after importing the OVA, you're going to need to go back to the vCenter server, um, convert it to a template, and then come here and just click the refresh button and it should see it. The final thing that it's going to ask for is the CEIP agreement, which is the customer experience so that some anonymous data can actually be uploaded to VMware so that we can gather some stats on what you're doing with DKG. This is of no material importance whether or not you turn this on or off. It's entirely user preference. Now, once you've done this, you're going to go ahead and click review configuration. You'll be able to browse through on the browser itself all of the settings that we've just done. Go ahead and give those a quick look. And then what I do is actually export the configuration here. Now, you could actually just go ahead and click deploy management cluster if you so choose. Um, however, and it will go and work through and actually deploy the management cluster as you would hope. However, if there are errors um, and the management cluster fails, it's more difficult to see what those errors are through the UI. So what I recommend you do is actually export the configuration so it'll download the YAML file um, to your local uh, bootstrap server. And then I copy that YAML file over, give it a new name, something that tells me that it's for my management cluster. And then I actually execute the Tanzu command to create the management cluster through a shell window. Now, this allows me to specify a couple extra flags. Depending on your environment, you might need to increase the timeout if your storage isn't incredibly fast. Um, I, I have a home lab, so my Synology Ray, while quick, is not always quick enough. And the default timeout is 30 minutes, so I usually increase that to 60 or 90 minutes. And then the other thing that allows me to do when I do this through the CLI is actually increase the verbosity level um, of the output when it's actually creating the management cluster. And this lets me actually see what's going on with a little bit more detail. I can see maybe where it's become hung up. I can also see when certain phases have been passed that I know, and I'll show you here in the shell in a few minutes here, how I watch the actual machines being deployed both in the vSphere client and then also through the shell and the, from a Kubernetes perspective as it executes and creates those, those machines and uh, throughout the different phases. So like I said, I whatever you'd like to do here is your choice. I recommend doing it through the shell just so you have a little bit more control over it. All right, the time has come for us to actually deploy our first TKG management cluster. So go ahead and open up a shell window inside of your TKG bootstrap box. And you're going to go ahead and move to whatever directory you've copied that YAML file that we just downloaded from Firefox. And then what we're going to do is actually just execute the command Tanzu space management dash cluster create minus F the name of the file. And then I like to increase the verbosity by going minus V five and then increasing the timeout by going minus minus timeout 90 M for 90 minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and let this kick off. All right, once we hit enter, we're going to actually see the server ask us two quick questions. The first question is whether or not we want to install TKGS. So we say no to the first question. And then it's going to ask us if we want to actually install a non-integrated Tanzu Kubernetes management cluster. And we're going to say yes here. Now, these two questions are really the difference between TKGS, which is built into vSphere, and all of the versions and everything are tied to your actual vSphere version that you have installed within your environment, or TKGM, which is a standalone Kubernetes environment and gives you a little bit more flexibility. This is also the version of TKG that we can install inside of AWS and on Azure natively. So go ahead and hit no and then yes, and then you're going to see the bootstrap process actually kick off. Now, this bootstrap process and why we actually call this machine that we're using the bootstrap server is that the first thing TKG is going to do is actually start up a Kubernetes cluster using the kind binaries, okay? And it's going to actually run a Kubernetes cluster on this single bootstrap server. And it's going to actually instantiate a full Kubernetes cluster all on this single node. And it's going to start all of the services that are specific to not just Kubernetes, like core DNS and etcd, but also the CAPV and CAPI binaries and containers that are necessary for TKG. And it's going to use this box to actually do the initial instantiation of our management cluster inside of our VMware SDDC environment. 
So you can see as we go through here, we're gonna watch the bootstrap process in the first screen. And then once it gets to a point where the kind server has actually started, we're gonna switch over to another screen and we're gonna actually watch those pods come online. And once all of the pods are online, including in our case, the NSX Advanced Load Balancer pods called AKO for um, Avi Kubernetes Operator, once those are started, then in that same screen, we'll cancel out of watching the pod start and we'll switch our view to the machines. And the machines are actually showing us the cloned VMs that are being created inside of our VMware SDDC environment using the template that we specified earlier in the YAML file. And it's going to instantiate first a single controller and a single worker. It's going to then configure the NSX Advanced Load Balancer virtual service for the control plane for that controller. And then once that is online and we see the virtual service fully configured, then it will actually continue to go on and deploy the other two control plane nodes that we need for Kubernetes. Now, in this instance, I've specified a variable called worker underscore node underscore count, which specified I only want one worker node because I don't need my management cluster to actually be too large. I'm not planning on using it for running any sort of shared services within my environment. So with only three control nodes and one worker node, that's gonna be the totality of my TKG management cluster inside of my VMware SDDC environment. Once the virtual machines are online within the VMware SDDC environment and TKG has managed to configure them as members of the Kubernetes cluster, we're gonna switch back over to the normal screen where we initiated the actual Tanzu command to create the management cluster. And at this point, you'll see it actually go through some final steps to actually configure this cluster. One of the things it's doing is actually that bootstrap cluster that's running locally, it's actually copying all of the data that it used to create the management cluster and actually copying all of that metadata into the management cluster that's now running inside of your VMware SCDC environment. Once it's finished doing that and all of the services are online, it finishes the execution. The virtual service within the NSX Advanced Load Balancer is online and confirmed. At that point, we are done. And you now have a management cluster of Kubernetes from TKG running within your VMware SDDC environment. In this video, we covered all of the prerequisites necessary to be able to deploy TKG within your VMware SDDC environment. We showed you what networks are necessary in NSX. We showed you how to configure the NSX Advanced Load Balancer and create the certificate. And we also covered how to generate the very first YAML file that we used to deploy our management cluster inside of our VMware SDDC environment. And then we went through the process of deploying that Kubernetes management cluster within our environment, and it is now ready for us to use and deploy workload clusters. In the next video, I'll show you how to deploy a workload cluster using TKG within your VMware SDDC environment. After installing the workload cluster, I'll also show you how to install Contour and Envoy using the plugin system with Tanzu so that you have load balancing services for your application workloads that you deploy within this Kubernetes cluster. I'll also show you how to deploy a, a, an example workload HTT bin that is front ended by an NSX advanced load balancer virtual service. I hope this video was useful to you. Please reach out. Leave comments below, like and subscribe, and also check out virtualelephant.com.